Report. It is Friday it and it's fun, but we're just hours away from more public testimony in the impeachment probe of President Trump. Today, lawmakers will hear from former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch. She told lawmakers last month that she had been the target of a smear campaign by corrupt Ukrainian politicians, as well as the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and his associates. Yovanovitch also testified last month that U.S. Ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sundland, suggested that she tweet praise mm. of President Trump if she wanted to save her job. So you have to tweet something positive. It is so embarrassing. About the commander in the chief. The smallest people need things like that. It's awful. To save your job. You need a tweet. As a, a, a foreign service dedicated servant. Really? A separate uh, closed door deposition has also been scheduled for later this afternoon. Lawmakers want to hear from State Department official David Holmes. He is the staffer that Ambassador Bill Taylor referenced in his testimony Wednesday as having overheard a phone call where President Trump reportedly asked Ambassador Sundland about the status of investigations in Ukraine. That phone call was a uh, <laughs> David Ignatius. That was a showstopper. That I, uh, that, I didn't see that coming. Then the annals of insecurity. That's got to be way up there. Wow. Now, number one, your president's talking so loud through the cell phone that, you can that he's him. overheard by. We, we know of two people, but what about uh, Igor and Ivan who were sitting right. at the next table? Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> it's just a, a, extraordinary that that this that this happened. Um, uh, among other things, it, it just shows such a loose. Uh, White House uh, operation. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know whether we'll hear publicly from Holmes, who overheard the conversation. Then there's said to be a second person. So loud was this conversation that a second person also may have heard and it. And part of it, you know, first of all, Donald speaks very loudly. Second, so they say. So they say. Secondly, mm -hmm. there is, of course, the, the uh, funny uh, reality that Sondland would want everybody to know that he was speaking to the president. Well, look at, yeah, hey, look inner, at this. Inner circle, and now the president Little says, did he, I didn't even know the guy. I don't <laughs> even remember him. Little did he know that his showing up, I've got the president here talking, would end up with him testifying yeah. before Congress. Now, what, David, an argument that Republicans have been making uh, that uh, is, is such a callous argument, callous argument, is they're saying, well, you know, it doesn't matter. They, yes, the aid was delayed. Yes, it took them a while to get the aid, but no harm, no foul. But you actually say that delay actually caused the death of Ukrainians. So I don't, I don't know that I'd say that it caused the death. It's hard to, hard to do cause and effect. But the thing that people should understand is that there was a war going on. On the, on the eastern front of Ukraine, there were Russian-backed forces who were counting on this U.S. military aid. Uh, it was a sign of, the, of our commitment to, to support them. Uh, and, and in this period where the president held it up uh, arbitrarily, mm -hmm. waiting for some political statement from Ukraine to support his, in effect, support his campaign, people at the front were, were dying. There, there are daily reports from the European monitors. Uh, and you could just read the people who died day after day in this period. July, August, September. Well, people who might not have died <coughs> had that aid so, have been right there. Right then, we can't, it's hard to say, but what we do know is that the president was completely oblivious right. to, the, to the reality of this war going on. He didn't care. Didn't it wasn't care. an issue for him. And what you can say, Willie, is that I'm people sure why were you can't dying say it. while the president, well, you can say people <laughs> were dying while the president was holding up. Aid that would have to, maybe to, kept to, them to, alive. To a, to a Democratic ally who was invaded by Vladimir Putin and Russia, and Donald had his arms for dirt scheme, and he wasn't he wasn't going to give relief to the Ukrainian people who were being killed by these Russian insurgents until he got dirt on Joe Biden. And that explains the desperation of President Zelensky on these phone calls, on all these these cables and everything we've seen to get that money to do whatever it takes. Sure, I'll go on CNN and do an interview and announce these investigations. We need the money. It's life and death. And I think what's interesting, too, at least today in Ambassador Yovanovitch, we will see again, like in Bill Taylor and George Kent, another career diplomat, somebody who was first uh, put in by George W. Bush, and then she was appointed to her post in Ukraine by President Obama, worked under Democrats and Republicans. 
somebody who's just there doing a job, somebody who's not the member of the deep state, somebody who's not a never Trumper, as she's been accused of, who was completely smeared and told in April at one o'clock in the morning, Ukraine time, to get on a plane and get home because of her personal security with no explanation for what that meant. I just can't imagine being <clears throat> in a hardship post granted it's not a war well i mean mm. kiev is not a war zone but it's not it's not it's far not away Paris. not far away and, and they and they want to get to kiev to get a call from your own people being like you're not safe because that's right of the commander in chief and i'm so glad today that ambassador yovanovich is getting to defend herself thank god after all of these smears and she gets to go forward and tell her truth in the way that a diplomat speaks. And that was what I felt was so compelling about Ambassador Taylor and George Kent, because they did, they stuck to the facts, they didn't give opinion, they refused to give opinion, and that was what was so powerful about their testimony. David. So, uh, Elise, we should listen carefully when Ambassador Ivanovich today speaks, because she wanted help so badly. She was being literally hounded out of her embassy by this campaign of lies against her. She asked her boss, Secretary of State, for help repeatedly, turned to him, I need a statement of support. Can't you please refute this? Can't somebody do something? And there was complete silence from the top. <coughs> it really does wow. sound to me like a general who's, who's getting pleas from one of his subordinate commanders, I need help, who just ignores it. And Pompeo just sat there mm -hmm. and let the attacks from... He, right wing he, he kept cable silent. news he chatter. Kept silent. He preserved Rudy Giuliani. His... Exactly. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.